Today on Zero Omens, we're taking a ride downtown to uncover the mysteries of the iCarly iceberg. iCarly was a very popular Nickelodeon live action sitcom which ran from 2007 till 2012 and was recently revived back in 2021. The second season of the iCarly revival premieres on April 8th, so there's no better time than right now to dive back through time and relive some well-known facts about the series as well as some unknown and controversial trivia not many fans might be aware of. I've been a fan of the series since I was just a kid, so being able to make this video was a real treat as I not only got to relive some old iCarly moments, but I also got to travel down some dark rabbit holes and conspiracies about the show that I've never even heard about before. I believe that if you're a longtime fan of the series just like me, then you'll really enjoy this video. There's timestamps in the description to different sections of the video if you want to skip around. This video took multiple weeks to create, as you can tell by the length of this masterpiece, so I would really appreciate a like and a comment below, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss another upload from me. For those of you who know exactly what an iceberg chart is, skip to the next chapter of the video or the timestamp on screen, but for those of you who are new to this topic of icebergs, let me briefly explain. An iceberg chart is an image of an iceberg which represents a topic and is divided into different sections with the top portion being common facts and trivia about the topic the iceberg chart represents. The further you dive down the iceberg chart, the better chance you'll have of running into more obscure, unknown, creepy conspiracy, lesser known trivia and theories about the iceberg topic. In this video, for example, we're taking a look at an iCarly iceberg. The top portion of the iceberg will be about about facts and trivia that most iCarly fans will know about. However, the more we dive into the ocean, the less likely those iCarly fans will understand. I cannot find the original creator of this large iceberg, but whoever you are, shout out to you. With all of that information out of the way, grab some snacks, some popcorn, some liquid nitrogen, some paint thinner, and some sunscreen because it's about to get crazy. Let's get started. Fredward. Fredward was the name of the character Freddie Benson played in the iCarly sketch Moonlight Twilight, a spoof on the popular Twilight series, which debuted in Season 4, Episode 9, titled I Pity the Neville. See, back in the late 2000s to early 2010s, Edward Cullen from Twilight was a massive sensation amongst the female crowd due to his good vampire looks. After the Fredward Cullen skit, girls in the iCarly universe started obsessing over Freddie until the very end of the episode, when girls started obsessing over Gibby, who was dressed like a werewolf, which is of course a little nod to Jacob the werewolf from the Twilight series who was also a fan favorite amongst the females. Main cast. The main cast of the original iCarly series consisted of Miranda Cosgrove, Jeanette McCurdy, Nathan Kress, Jerry Trainer, and Noah Monk. Although there were a ton of other supporting characters who appeared frequently, these five were the main core of the show. iCarly Revival. The iCarly Revival series announcement came on December 9th, 2020 from the official Nickelodeon Twitter and iCarly Facebook page. Nathan Kress, Jerry Trainer, and Miranda Cosgrove were set to reprise their original iconic roles along with some new castmates and would base the show 10 years into the future and would be more adult oriented for the older fans who grew up with the original show. Sako. Sako is the best friend of Spencer Shea and was first mentioned in season 1 episode 7 I Scream on Halloween. Sako is also the CEO of a company which specializes in light up socks, kind of like those sketchers you got as a kid but for socks. Although he's been mentioned in multiple episodes, Sako's full body has never been seen on camera. 
However, in the special eye party with Victorious when Sako lends Spencer his van, you can see Sako's right arm extend towards Spencer, handing him the keys to the van. iCarly real life website. In the iCarly universe, all of the web shows were hosted on a fictional iCarly.com website. However, the site actually existed in real life for a brief period of time, and it featured blogs, pictures, news, short video clips, games, and songs. It was just a very fun, interactive way to keep fans involved with the show during its life cycle and it pains me that the site doesn't exist anymore because when I was a kid I used to enjoy going to the website after a new episode released because it kind of continued the story of the latest episode. iPilot. iPilot is the title of the first episode of the original iCarly series which aired on September 8th 2007. The plot revolved around Carly taking the blame for something that Sam did, specifically photoshopping their teacher Miss Briggs head onto a rhino's body. As punishment Carly had to spend her Saturday afternoon judging the school's talent show auditions instead of going to a cuttlefish concert. In retaliation, Carly makes Sam go with her to the auditions because the whole reason why Carly has to judge the auditions in the first place is because of Sam's actions. Carly then needed a camera for the talent show auditions, but Spencer, her older brother, turns their only camera into a squirrel sculpture. She then asked her neighbor, Freddie, for help, and he ended up bringing a whole studio with him to the talent show. As per every middle school talent show, the acts were boring, and you can't get mad at me for that. 99% of you have fallen asleep during a middle school talent show. Anyway, the acts were boring and dog shit. However, after watching the audition of a boy who looked just like Miss Briggs, Carly and Sam made jokes about their teacher's crazy pointy boobs. And because Freddy is a stupid dumb idiot head, he decided to film the girls making jokes about their teacher's crazy pointy boobs. And because Freddy is a bigger stupid dumb idiot head than we previously thought, he made it oopsie whoopsie and accidentally uploaded that footage to the iCarly Universe's YouTube counterpart Splashface, and people were loving that video. I guess you could say the iCarly's were were going viral. Unfortunately, Miss Briggs saw the video on Splashface and decided to ban all of the acts that Carly and Sam nominated for the talent show. Obviously, Carly and Sam were pretty pissed off, so they decided to host their own internet talent show and showcase all of the banned acts. Thus, iCarly was born. I Goodbye. I Goodbye was the series finale to the original iCarly series, and the one hour long special premiered on November 23rd, 2012. Essentially, Carly and Spencer's dad shows up to take Carly to the father daughter Air Force dance, but afterwards, her dad has to head back to the Air Force Base in Italy. Carly is obviously super upsetty spaghetti because this is the first time in forever that she got to see her father, and it's the first time that people like you and me got to see her dad, so her father invites her to come along with him. The gang does one final web show and says goodbye. I also forgot to mention that in this episode, Colonel Stephen Shea finds out that Spencer, his son, dropped out of law school to become an artist, and he wasn't too happy at first. Miss Briggs' crazy pointy boobs. As I mentioned before, in the pilot episode of iCarly, Sam and Carly make fun of Miss Briggs' crazy pointy boobs because they are crazy and very pointy and are also boobs. Hair brand. In the real world, we have Apple. Apple is a company started by Steve Jobs, which specializes in devices like iPhones and tablets and computers and is well known worldwide due to its simple Apple logo and very overpriced products that are terrible. They're just terrible. They're god awful. I hate Apple. Well, in the iCarly universe, there are tons of fake parody brands and companies based on real world companies and Pear just so happens to be the iCarly counterpart to the real world Apple. Throughout the iCarly series, you could see pair computers and phones, and as a kid, I always wanted a pair phone because it was literally shaped like a pair, and I thought that was just sick. Although, I wouldn't really know how to fit that comfortably in my pocket. Creddy and Seti. Creddy is the pairing of Carly and Freddy, while Seti is the pairing of Sam and Freddy. This debate first popped up in the season 4 two-part episode, I Start a Fan War, which was just loaded with easter eggs from Dan Foot Toucher Schneider's previous work, Drake and Josh, and Zoe 101. In that episode, the iCarly cast hosted a panel at a convention with their fans, but their fans got out of control and started a fan war over who would be a better couple, Freddy and Sam or Freddy and Carly. At the end of the episode, the iCarly gang learns that super fans are crazy and to ignore the shipping. Rue the day. Rue the day is to feel very sorry about an event. It is also the catchphrase of one of the antagonists of the iCarly universe, Neville Papperman. Neville first used this iconic phrase in his debut episode from season one, I Neville, where Carly smeared Tapanod onto his face after he tried to kiss her without consent. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but us homies over here ask for consent before we kiss women. Leave it all to me. Leave it all to me is the name of the iCarly opening theme song, which features Drake Bell. Yikes. The 2021 Revival. As previously mentioned, the iCarly Revival premiered on June 17th, 2021. Sam's Remote. Sam Puckett's iconic blue remote is featured in practically every single episode of the series. Despite only having six buttons, it houses 93 different sounds. Freddy programs the sounds that they need for that week of the web show. 
show, Random Dancing. Random Dancing is a sketch on the iCarly web show that appears in multiple episodes. When Sam presses a button on her blue remote, it triggers a male voice to shout Random Dancing, which is followed by a light show and music and everyone in the show just starts dancing. The phenomenon Random Dancing made its debut in the episode I Reunite with Missy. And that, my friends, was just the tip of the iceberg. Neville Papperman. As previously mentioned before, Neville is one of the main antagonists of the iCarly story and runs a blog called Nevelocity.com. He is also known for using the catchphrase, you will woo this day, you woo it. I know, it's a terrible impression. Look, I'm not here for your validation, all right? I'm just here to give you some facts. Nora Dershlet. Nora Dershlet is an obsessed and mentally insane iCarly fan who appeared in the episodes I Psycho and I Still Psycho, in which both times she locks the iCarly crew in her basement. She also made an appearance in the iCarly spin off Sam and Cat, specifically the episode Hashtag Super Psycho. She then appeared in the iCarly reboot, but things haven't really changed much for her. Still crazy as ever. Mandy Valdez. Mandy Valdez is another obsessive fan, not to the extent of Nora, but is still pretty freaking crazy. She appeared in the episode I Am Your Biggest Fan. She could only be described as an annoying person who can do impressions of a duck, which makes her even more annoying. However, she is oblivious to the gang not liking her. At one point, she even owned the iCarly website in the episode I Want My Website back. iCarly video games. There were two iCarly video games made exclusively for the Nintendo Wii and DS systems. The first game was called iCarly the Game. How original. The whole premise of the game was that the iCarly website got deleted by Neville so the gang has to get it back by playing 10 mini games, which are presented as skits on the show. The game released on October 27th, 2009. The second game was a sequel to the original iCarly game called iCarly 2 I Join the Click, which was released on November 16th, 2010 and revolved around a new student joining Ridgeway High and interacting with the iCarly cast in various locations. Gibby f***ing dies meme. The Gibby f***ing dies meme is a YouTube video uploaded by a user called KMLKMLJKL on July 19th, 2017. It features a clip of Gibby falling from the ceiling of iCarly's apartment building after trying to prank Spencer during the season 3 episode I Get Pranky. However, in this video, once Gibby, or I guess Gibby's stunt devil, hits the concrete, an explosion appears on screen, and it's really funny. Gibby! Nevelocity.com. As previously mentioned before, Neville Papperman is the owner of a very popular blog website in the iCarly universe known as Nevelocity.com. He on Carl. He on Carl was the result of an electronic billboard created by Spencer gone horribly wrong. In the episode I Want More Viewers, Carly and Sam team up against Spencer and Freddy to see who can bring in more viewers to the iCarly show. The loser of the competition would have to touch their doorman Lubert's wart. Spencer and Freddy came up with the idea to put up a large sign overlooking a major highway in downtown Seattle. Originally, the sign said, please go to iCarly.com. However, the sign was so bright and distracting that it caused a massive car pile up on the highway. Carly, Sam, and Freddy urged Spencer to turn off the sign, but the sign malfunctioned and all but nine letters blew out, causing the sign to say P on Carl. Eventually, the police arrived, they got Spencer, they brought him home, let him off with a warning, and ironically, the one cop that told him that was named Carl. Freddy's shoes. During the early days of iCarly, the cast was very young and short, especially Nathan Cress. He was smaller than his castmates at the time, so the producers decided to give him black platform shoes to give him a boost in height. Fans obviously noticed that the shoes were very large for his size. Luckily, he didn't need them for long. Sako's extended family. Sako's family consists of many people who have names related to their occupations. For example, Sako runs a sock company. Artie is Sako's art cousin. Bernie is Sako's depressed welder cousin. Boomer is Sako's demolitions cousin. Rob is another one of Sako's cousins who, you guessed it, Rob's in steals and was featured in the episode I give away a car and there's of course other members like Freight Dog, Ginger, Harry, Hunter, Isaac, Jean, Josh, Mary, Odo, Dr. Paxel, Penny, Sako's grandma, Sako's stepmom, Taylor, who makes tuxedos, and Tyler, who makes ties. Tebow. Terrence Jeter Bow, otherwise known as Tebow, is a Jamaican man who works at the Groovy Smoothie. He's mostly known for selling various foods on sticks that wouldn't make sense to put on a stick in the first place, like tacos or pickles. In the beginning of the series, Tebow was nothing more than just a side character, but in the later seasons, he became more intertwined with the iCarly main cast and story. Lou 
Lubert. Lubert's line is the very unpleasant, disturbing doorman of Bushwell Plaza, the apartment building of Carly Spencer and Freddy. He's mostly known for having a very grotesque wart growing on the side of his face, and according to the iCarly wiki, Lubert ran for pre <laughs> Lubert ran for president during the 2008 U.S. presidential race, which I didn't even know about that until now. You're telling me he lost to Obama? Melanie. Melanie Puckett is the identical twin sister of Sam, which means that both her and Sam were born on a city bus. Fun fact for all of you. Sam has a strong dislike towards her girly sister, which is why she is rarely brought up throughout the entire series. She does make an appearance in the episode I Twins, where she comes to visit Sam. Freddy believes that it's a trick by Carly and Sam to prove that Freddy is very gullible. And because Freddy is a dangerous mad lad with testosterone out the wazoo, he asks Melanie out and she ends up falling for the guy. He freaks out because he still believes that it's Sam and not Melanie, but at the end of the episode, it turns out that Melanie is actually Sam's sister, and it's not an elaborate prank. When I was a kid and this episode aired, it was really freaky to see two Sams on screen. Because not only was Freddy under the impression that Melanie was fake, but the audience as well. And of course, because eight or nine year old Johnny Boy was like, well, how the hell did they get two Jeanette McCurdy's on screen at the same time? Packrat. Packrat is a parody of Pac-Man in the iCarly universe. In the episode I Stage an Intervention, Spencer buys a very old pack rat machine, fixes it up, and becomes very addicted to the game. He ends up becoming the number one pack rat player in the world after the iCarly crew finds a girl named Sasha Stryker, who was, at the time, the number one player with the highest score ever recorded. The gang called her up to battle against Spencer in pack rat, hoping to snap him out of his addiction. Fat Cakes. Fat Cakes are another parody brand in the iCarly universe, a spoof off of the real-life snowballs or tasty cake products. They first appear in the TV movie I Go To Japan, where it turns out that Sam filled her entire suitcase with the low-fat version of the fat cakes. According to scientists, there's different versions of the fat cakes ranging from regular to low-fat to fat-free to fat shakes and even Canadian fat cakes which are illegal in the United States for some goddamn unknown reason. The Shea Apartment, a three-story apartment with a private elevator in the Bushwell Plaza of Seattle, Washington, with the room number being 8C. The first floor consists of a bathroom, Spencer's room, a living room, a kitchen, and the elevator shaft. The second floor isn't confirmed to have anything according to this rough map, but I personally believe that Carly's room and a bathroom are on the second floor, and of course, the top floor is the iconic iCarly studio. Of course, over the last 10 years after the original show ended, the Shea apartment got some TLC, tender love and care, and was remodeled to represent a more industrial look with exposed bricks and a modern-esque feel. I Psycho, I Still Psycho, and Hashtag Super Psycho. I Psycho and I Still Psycho are two iCarly episodes featuring the infamous Nora Dershlet. Hashtag Super Psycho is an episode of the iCarly spinoff Sam and Cat, where Nora makes a return. Nora breaks out of prison and wants revenge. This episode is chocked full of Easter eggs, including an appearance by Neville, who plays a role in the plot, and Crazy Steve, the theater employee played by Jerry Trainer in Drake and Josh. Although Jerry Trainer isn't exactly playing Crazy Steve in this episode, they're just using his audio. Nora basically kidnaps a kid named Dice and also Cat as well. And obviously, to our surprise, it doesn't really work out super well for Nora. She is defeated and arrested once again. Spencer's things always catch on fire. There's a running gag throughout the iCarly series where Spencer manages to catch almost everything on fire, and not in a sense that he accidentally knocks a lit candle over and it catches a rug or a curtain on fire. I mean, this man somehow makes everything he touches spontaneously combust. Some of the many objects he manages to burn are customer service bells, rollerblades, a drum set, a printer, a Nerf egg gun, and a goddamn fire extinguisher. There is an iCarly theory that Spencer can just bend fire at will, but that's a video for another day. Principal Franklin. Ted Franklin is now the former principal of Ridgeway High and is beloved by all students, including the iCarly gang. He appears in the debut episode iPilot, where he is seen talking to Carly about her behavior. And of course, his character makes appearances throughout the entire iCarly series. He recently made a return as Principal Franklin, or I guess Mr. Franklin at this point, in the iCarly revival episode I Am Cursed, where he shows up to Carly's apartment to give both Carly and Freddy their letters from their past selves and announce that he retired as principal. Mr. Howard. Mr. Marty Bald Asshole Howard is a very unlikable douchebag teacher at Ridgeway High. He's a very grouchy bald asshole who hates children. Call me selfish, but I'm laughing at my own script. Marty Howard is a very unlikable teacher at Ridgeway High. He's a very grouchy bald asshole who hates children, yet he works as a teacher. He first appears in the episode I Got Detention, where he is supposed to be monitoring the 
the detention room, but runs off to the teacher's lounge to go play with himself or something like that. I don't like this guy at all. It's rumored that he was having an affair with Miss Briggs as well, which would make sense because they're both grouches. There was even a point in the series where himself and Miss Briggs became co-principals after Ted Franklin was fired in the episode I Have My Principles. Miss Briggs. As mentioned before, Miss Francine Briggs is another snot-nosed teacher who hates everyone, likes to yell, and has crazy pointy boobs, apparently. She served as co-principal of Ridgeway High alongside Mr. Howard in the episode I Have My Principles, and she's not super fond of the iCarly crew and really dislikes Spencer as well. Oh, did I mention that she has crazy pointy boobs? Baby Spencer. Baby Spencer is a running segment on the iCarly web show where Spencer puts his head into a baby puppet and pretends to be a child while Carly and Sam feed him gross food like salsa and warm mayonnaise. <coughs> oh, the mayonnaise part grosses me out. Colonel Stephen Shea. Stephen Shea is Carly and Spencer's daddy. He's been mentioned throughout the entire original series, but made only one appearance in the final episode, I Goodbye. The 2021 Revival main cast. The 2021 iCarly Revival main cast consists of Miranda Cosgrove as Carly, Nathan Cress as Freddy, Jerry Trainer as Spencer, and two new additional cast members. Lacey Mosley as Harper, who is Carly's roommate and best friend, and Jaden Truplett as Mel Millicent, who is Freddy's daughter, Splashface. Splashface is a parody of YouTube in the iCarly universe. Similarities with Sam and Cat. The best similarities I could find within Sam and Cat are that iCarly, Sam and Cat, and Victorious are set in the same universe, so they share a variety of the same characters and deal with similar situations. Other than that, Sam and Cat isn't a great show, and let's never compare the two ever again. Plain White Tees. The Plain White Tees is an American rock band from Illinois, which currently consists of Tom Higginson, Dave Tyrio, and Ken Fletcher. You guys remember that song? Hey There Delilah, or they're the masterminds behind that song. The band guest starred on the iCarly episode, I Rue the Day. Spencer essentially saved Tom Higginson, the lead singer's life, and as a token of his appreciation, they decided to perform on the iCarly web show. And that, my friends, was only beneath the surface of the iceberg. Missy. Missy Robinson is the former best friend of Carly. She appears in the episode I Reunite with Missy, where she returns to Seattle to rekindle her friendship with Carly and destroy and sabotage Carly and Sam's current bestie relationship. Now, if you thought that Sam was evil throughout the entire series, Missy was a whole different breed. It was a very unique dynamic to have someone bring down Sam, whereas previously, Sam would just bring down everyone else. But thanks to the testosterone-loaded Freddie Benson, he helped get rid of Missy by giving up his cruise ticket prize to Missy and she died on a boat or something, I don't know. Wendy. Wendy was a side character in multiple episodes of iCarly. She had some one-liners and her purpose was pretty limited. She was more of a background character with some lines in a few episodes than a side character like Chuck or Guppy who appeared in multiple episodes with fleshed out dialogue. One parent. This seems to be a reoccurring theme in iCarly. Freddy doesn't have a dad, Carly and Spencer don't have a mom, and Sam doesn't, uh, well, well, sometimes she has a mom. Apparently this is a very important motif in iCarly, a motif being like a reoccurring idea or concept. If you've read Macbeth, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what a motif is, and you've never read Macbeth, then shut the fuck up. Every main character in the iCarly universe for the most part comes from an unconventional parenting situation. Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson is a musician and was a judge on Old School American Idol. He never made an appearance in the iCarly show, but in the episode I Spy on My Teacher, when Carly and Freddie were in Miss Briggs' closet, they saw a giant shrine dedicated to the celebrity. Jesus Christ, that is terrifying. Why Jeanette McCurdy quit acting? Jeanette McCurdy, the actor who played Sam Puckett on iCarly was absent during the series revival and that left fans wondering what the hell was going on if there was drama or beef between castmates, if Jeanette just wasn't interested in the role or something completely different. Well in an episode of her podcast Empty Inside on YouTube, she revealed that she actually quit acting several years ago. She actually didn't even want to become an actor in the first place and the only reason why she did it was because of her family. She's ashamed of the roles she played in the past too. And of course there were also some issues regarding her and the creator of the show Dan Foot Toucher Schneider. I won't get into the specifics, but essentially it wasn't a great work environment for Jeanette. In fact, it was very toxic. The original cast and Jeanette are still good friends and there is no bad bullet or beef between any of them. Maybe she'll return to the show, maybe she won't, it just depends on what she's feeling and I respect that. But as of this moment, Jeanette just wants to do her own thing and we have to just respect her wishes. Despite the fact that Sam was a very important character to the iCarly cast, her not being in the revival gives a chance for new characters to come into the revival world and grow like Harper for example. The Dingo Channel. Dingo is a parody of Disney which was founded by Charles Dingo, and in the episode I Take on Dingo, the iCarly gang heads down to
into the writer's room of a show called Totally Terry at the Dingo Network to knock some sense into the writers for stealing iCarly bits like messing with Luber, for example. And also, fun fact for all of you, Charles Dingo's head is frozen underneath the Dingo HQ and the gang uses it as blackmail and leverage to get the writers of Totally Terry to stop stealing ideas, which ultimately works. I Party with Victorious. I Party with Victorious was a massive crossover event with iCarly and Victorious and it featured Keenan Thompson, so I guess you could technically call this a crossover between iCarly, Victorious, and Keenan and Kel, although Kel wasn't in it. The plot revolves around Carly, who's been happily dating a boy named Stephen Carson, who divides his time between Seattle and Los Angeles because his parents are divorced, which is not even surprising at all, because it seems like everybody is fucking divorced in this world. However, what Carly doesn't know is that he is also dating Tori Vega when he spends time in Los Angeles. In other news, at Hollywood Arts, Andre is psyched that his uncle sold a house to Keenan Thompson, who allows him to have a small party there, and Rex the puppet has a stupid big fat mouth that started tweeting about the party and way more people ended up showing up to the house including an irritating guy in a panda bear costume which Andre and Keenan tried to get rid of for like half the episode. It turns out at the end of the episode that Keenan Thompson was cool with the whole party and the amount of people that showed up because he considers anything less than 500 people a small party. After Carly finds a picture of Steven and Tori on the slap.com Sam suspects him of cheating on Carly and the iCarly team decide to attend the party at Keenan Thompson's house to find out the truth. Just before leaving for Los Angeles Freddie realizes something and points it out to the rest to the gang with how popular their web show is, people might recognize them from iCarly and question how they're going to look for Steven at the party without anyone recognizing them. Spencer reveals that an ex-girlfriend of his works as a makeup artist for TV and movies in LA and he convinces her to help him and the iCarly gang. Sam and Freddy are given heavy prosthetic makeup while Gibby is given a hat, sunglasses, and a fake mole. With the exception of one guy recognizing Gibby who Gibby is forced to knock unconscious so he doesn't tell his friends about him and the iCarly trio being at the party, they're able to sneak into the party and look for Steven without being recognized after Carly sees Steven giving Tori the exact same charm brace that he gave her and also kissing her. She discusses her course of action with Sam and Freddy when Tori comes in. After telling her about Steven dating both of them, they team up to take revenge on him. With Keenan Thompson's help, they reveal Steven to be a cheater and a liar live on iCarly. Some of the B, C, and D plots in this episode revolve around Rex challenging the party guests to rap battles after Robbie wrecks the karaoke machine and defeats everyone, but is eventually beaten by Sam. Cat has an infection in her throat and uses a headband with a Bluetooth speaker and her pair phone to communicate with everyone. Karina babysits Lane's friend's kid for Lane. She wants to go to the party so she takes them with her and gives them to Kat, but later Kat loses them and Lane finds them asleep by some garbage can. Psychowitz, Beck, Jade, and Spencer spend the time in Keenan Thompson's jacuzzi. And at the end of the episode, the main cast of both shows sing a mashup of their theme songs Leave It All To Me and Make It Shine. And the mashup is titled Leave It All To Shine. I'll tell you what, it wasn't the greatest crossover in the history of Nickelodeon because I feel like Jimmy Timmy Power Hour was definitely S tier, but iCarly and Victorious combined together for one hour was a pretty memorable moment in my childhood. As the kids like to say, it was Poggers, bro. A smoothie. In the episode I Meet Fred, Spencer finds a magic meatball, which is just a magic eight ball, but in the shape of a meatball, and somehow this contraption convinces Spencer to buy an ostrich named Marvin. Spencer comes up the elevator, and when Carly asks, what you got there, Spencer replies with a smoothie. This became a very popular meme around the entire internet during the time. What you got there? It's a smoothie. I Go to Japan. I Go to Japan was iCarly's first feature-length film which released on November 8th, 2008. The iCarly team is nominated for the annual iWeb Awards and are invited to attend the ceremony in Japan where in order to qualify for the award, they will be expected to perform a skit live on stage. Prior to their trip to Japan, they create a sketch called Melanie Higgles Space Cheerleader. They receive three first-class tickets. Mrs. Benson initially refuses to allow Freddie to go on the trip. Even after Spencer volunteers to chaperone the kids, she agrees instead to come along. Since they don't have enough air Line tickets for five people, Spencer gets the idea to trade the three first class tickets for five lower class ones. However, he subsequently calls in a favor from Saga, which results in the team riding to Japan aboard an unsanitary possum filled cargo airplane bound for Korea, flown by Freight Dog, one of Saga's relatives. After a rough ride, they are forced to skydive into Tokyo. The group winds up landing in a deserted area, but are fortunately found by the police officer who brings them to safety to the hotel they would be staying at. After checking in and sleeping off of their jet lag, they are visited by 
by Kyoko and Yuki, the stars of a competing web show. Kyoko and Yuki give Spencer and Mrs. Benson free passes to a spa and take Carly, Sam, and Freddy shopping. As generous as their gestures seem, Kyoko and Yuki have their minds set on sabotaging iCarly's chances of winning the iWeb Awards. They purposely fight over and over again for directions until Yuki admits they are lost. They take Carly, Sam, and Freddy to the middle of nowhere and, after staging a kung fu fight, drive off. Meanwhile, Spencer and Mrs. Benson find themselves bound to their massage tables by seaweed, naked, a problem rectified by Spencer's appetite, in which Mrs. Benson sees him naked twice, first is while freeing himself and secondly when his towel falls off, when he gets the sword to free Mrs. Benson. Eventually, the gang reunites and is able to get to the iWeb Awards, only to be prevented from entering the studio because the security guards don't speak English. Mrs. Benson distracts the guards and they get in, only to be quickly apprehended. The guards keep them in a room and Carly and Sam try to communicate with them by having to act out exactly what happened to them during their trip. Freddy cleverly decides to videotape them, plugging his camcorder into the iWeb Awards screen. Unknown to the girls, their manic performance is being broadcast to the audience, overshadowing Kyoko and Yuki's performance. They are saved by Theodore Wilkins, the man who invited them, who speaks fluent Japanese. iCarly then wins the award for best comedy, though Carly and Sam have no idea how they won until Freddy explains what he did. After Carly and the gang reveal Kyoko and Yuki's evil plot, the siblings are arrested for kidnapping. Finally, the iCarly gang, along with Spencer and Mrs. Benson, return to America on what appears to be a fishing boat owned by one of Sako's family members. Spencer then gives each of them soap, telling them it was candy, but forgets it was soap. They all cough and gag in disgust as the boat sails away towards the horizon. And that was the end of the first iCarly movie. Sam has a picture of Drake Bell in her locker. For those of you who have eyes, this is a very famous Easter egg in the iCarly universe. Sam has a picture of Drake Bell in her locker. Yikes. She also has a pic of Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy if you look close enough. David Schwimmer. Just like Randy Jackson, David Schwimmer never makes an official appearance in the iCarly show. However, he is referenced in multiple episodes, specifically the episodes I Want My Website Back, I Meet Fred, I Believe in Bigfoot, and I Toe Fat Cakes. Beef Coon. No, this isn't a racial slur, although it sounds a lot like one. A beef coon in the iCarly universe is a fictional supernatural creature, which is a combination of a beaver's head with the body of a raccoon. And according to Spencer, it's yay long, yay wide, head of a beaver rump of a raccoon makes a hissing sound like <laughs> You know, it kind of sounds like that weird girl that sits alone in your lunchroom that makes the hissing sounds. We actually get a chance to see the beef coon in action in the episode I Believe in Bigfoot. Guppy. Guppy fucking Gibson, aka Ethan Monk, is one of my absolute favorite characters in the series. He's both the real life brother of Noah Monk and the brother of Gibby in the iCarly series. His first appearance is in iPsycho. However, he does make an appearance in iSpeed Date in the credits as a five-year-old Gibby who likes cheese. Although Noah won't be returning in season two of the iCarly revival, Ethan, aka Guppy, will actually be returning in season two of the revival. And here's a screenshot to prove it. This is insane. It gets me so hyped up for next season of iCarly. And I truly hope that Noah eventually changes his mind and joins the cast once again. But either way, I'm just happy that we have the return of Guppy. Like, this is incredible. I could literally shit my pants right now. I could literally shit my pants and piss and choke on vomit. Maybe will you take me back? In the iCarly universe, there's a fictional band known as Backflesh, and they make an appearance in the episode I Am Your Biggest Fan. Backflesh has a song called Take Me Back, which plays every so often in the background of the series, and one of the lines from that song is, Baby, will you take me back? But sadly, the song is copyrighted, so I can't play it in this video, but if you're curious about the song, just look up Backflesh, Take Me Back. If you're an iCarly fan, you'll know this song by heart. Trust me. Jeremy Jeremy. Jeremy is a student at Ridgeway who earned the nickname Jeremy because he's been rumored to be sick since first grade and is the Jeremiest kid in school. In the episode I Will Date Freddy, he was Freddy's replacement for the web show but could not hold the camera still to film the iCarly series webcast. Not because he has Parkinson's but because he just kept fucking sneezing all over the place and it was gross. He also makes appearances in the episodes I Neville and I Don't Wanna Fight. Girly Cow. Girly Cow is a fictional animated TV show in the iCarly universe that Carly, Sam, and Spencer enjoy watching. It's also been seen in the background of Zoe 101 and Drake and Josh. Chuck. Chuck Chambers is a little boy that lives in Bushwell Plaza with his dad, older sister, and younger brother. He is known to pull pranks and be very violent when he doesn't get his way. He has a never-ending feud with Spencer throughout the series until Chuck is finally defeated and sent to military school by his father. And according to the trailer for iCarly Revival Season 2, Chuck will be returning, which is fantastic news. But the feud between Chuck and Spencer continue. Durf. Durf is a fake number between 5 and 6 and just looks like an upside-down 4. It was created by Carly as a revenge plot against Chuck for tormenting Spencer. Durf is a number which is a part of a fake base 11 number system which is a part of international math laws. Carly being Chuck's tutor in math teaches Chuck the Durf number and the goal is for him to fail his math exam so he can get sent away to summer camp and Spencer can live a happy life once more. And it works. Chuck ends up failing his math exam and has to go to math camp for the entire summer and Spencer wins. You gotta switch it up on a bit. This line was presented by Carly in the first season of the iCarly revival, specifically episode 3. It's like Harper always says, you gotta switch it up on a bit. 
Jones. I Shock America. I Shock America is also known as I Love Jimmy Fallon, a sentence nobody has ever said ever. After Jimmy Fallon mentions iCarly on his late night show, the gang does a tribute webcast to him. Jimmy sees it and invites them to New York to appear on his show. On the flight to New York, Gibby's luggage gets lost, so he buys new clothes from a guy on the street. However, when they do a random variation of random dancing on Jimmy Fallon's show, Gibby's pants accidentally fall off, causing a major scandal. People initially blame Jimmy Fallon for allowing nudity on his show, but iCarly does a special webcast taking full responsibility for the incident. At a hearing by the NCC, they learn that the fine for nudity is $500,000. Since iCarly has taken the blame, they have to bring up the money or they will be shut down. They see no possibility of getting the money, so they are about to give up on iCarly when Jimmy Fallon's producer tells them to meet Jimmy once more. On the show, Jimmy reveals that he asks for donations to save iCarly via Twitter, and within a day, he received $576,904 from viewers. I lost my head in Vegas. During iCarly, Sam gets a text that her mother, Pam, is being held in a Las Vegas jail, and her lawyer informs her that she needs $2,500 to bail her out. Spencer suggests going to Las Vegas and pawning things to get the money. In Las Vegas, Freddy tries to sell a vintage computer to the Pawn Stars guys, and Carly and Sam try to sell a potato chip shaped like Texas, which gets eaten, and then later a bottle of Wahoo Punch Michelle Obama drank from and signed. After explaining their situation, they get the $2,500 they need and put the money in a bag with Gibby's fake head. In addition, Sam learns that if Pam is not bailed out by midnight, she will be kept in jail until Monday. However, just as they were about to leave, Gibby goes to the back of the store to sell his pants to Chum Lee without the others noticing, so he gets left behind. Before the others realize Gibby and the money are missing and return to the pawn shop, a man distracts Gibby with a moon rock, which is really just a random rock from the parking lot, and steals the money. Luckily, a little Asian girl wants to have Gibby's fake head, and her father offers them $10,000 for it. Gibby refuses to sell it, but Sam uses the Vulcan nerve pinch to render him unconscious. Once they get back to the RV, they realize Spencer isn't in the front seat to drive them, but singing in the shower. And of course, this beautiful episode featured the Pawn Stars guys, Rick Harrison, Corey Harrison, and Chum Lee. Man, they really did go out with the final season of iCarly. Tebow selling things on a stick. Tebow sells items on a stick like tacos and bagels. He proved that food sold better on a stick because he tested it by first trying to sell bananas in a bucket and only sold a few of them. He put the rest of the bananas on a stick and sold the rest. From that moment on, Tebow just continued to sell food on a stick like yams, muffins, donuts, turkey, artichokes, and pickles. I saved your life. In the special I saved your life, an iCarly fan dares Carly to wear a bunny suit and brush people's teeth for one dollar. While filming the skit, Carly is almost run over by a taco truck while crossing the street, but Freddy pushes her out of the way. While saving Carly's life, Freddy gets hit by the taco truck. When she visits Freddy later, while he is in the state of a broken right arm and a sprained left leg, she says he is his hero to her and she kisses him, finally admitting her feelings. After Freddy comes back to school, Sam seems amused by Carly and Freddy's relationship, saying to Freddy that the fact that he saved her life was Carly's bacon and tells Freddy it won't last because Carly only loves what he did, not who he is. When Fredward later doubts whether Carly really loves him or not, they agree to put their relationship on hold until he heals and try it again later. Freddy says if he still wants to be his girlfriend later, he would be really psyched about it. Freddy leaves, but when he is standing in the elevator at the end of the episode, he fully realizes that he just lost his dream girl, Carly, as his girlfriend, and moans, what did I do? That line is emphasized in the extended version of the episode. He yells the line again, and the camera pans to a wide shot of the building. Freddy then screams even louder. Wow, this is really sad. Boogie Bear. Boogie Bear is a fictional book in the iCarly universe. There are a minimum of three books known in the iCarly universe in the Boogie Bear series. Boogie Bear, Boogie Bear 2, and Boogie Bear 3, The Return of Boogie Bear. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of Boogie Bear. Oh, there's also a movie called Boogie Bear Takes Manhattan, which is mentioned in the episode I Rocked the Vote. MPEG. In the episode I stake out during the police visit, Freddy offers an MPEG of the iCarly web show that might feature the pirate movie suspect, which triggers an argument with Sam. Sam believes that MPEG means movie picture experts group, and Freddy believes it stands for Megapixel Electronic Gallery. He and Sam place a bet on who is right, and the loser has to get the winner's face tattooed on their arm. Obviously, Freddy loses because he's a stupid, dumb idiot head, and has to get a tattoo of Sam's face on his arm, which is done by her cousin Annie. But yeah, it's it's apparently Movie Picture Experts Group. Did not know that. Worldofchucks.com Worldofchucks.com is a fictional website in the iCarly universe briefly mentioned in the episode I Hatch Chicks. When Freddy attempts to access the website worldofchicks.com, he mistakenly typed Chuck instead of Chicks, and then that brought him to a website about famous people named Chuck. Some of the Chucks featured on the front page of the website include Chuck Norris, Chuck Yeager, Chuck Jones, and Chuck Berry. The cowboy and the idiot farm girl who thought the cowboy's mustache was a squirrel. The idiot farm girl who thought the cowboy's mustache was a squirrel is a sketch on the webcast where Carly is dressed as an idiot farm girl and Sam is dressed as the cowboy. Carly essentially pretends to think that the cowboy's mustache is a squirrel and the cowboy eventually gets angry and pissed off and shits their pants. Tasha. Tasha is Gibby's girlfriend for two episodes of iCarly. I speed date and I enrage Gibby. 
How does he get one of those? I have no idea either, man. The chip. In the movie I Go to Japan, it is revealed that Freddy's mom had a Venezuelan doctor implant a tracking chip into his skull. Yeah, talk about an invasion of privacy. Cuttlefish. Cuttlefish is a fictional American rock band based on the real life band Real Big Fish. They're mentioned throughout the iCarly series, like in the pilot episode where Carly had to cancel going to a Cuttlefish concert because Miss Briggs made her judge the talent show auditions instead. Gibbe. Gibbe is, uh, it's, it's essentially Gibby's catchphrase. Sometimes he's, uh, he says hello by saying Gibbe too, and, uh, Gibbe is a way to let people know that you have arrived, but it works better if your name is just Gibby. Yeah, I guess the best way to summarize Gibbe is that it's a noun and it basically means hello. Or hi, my name is Gibby, and I have arrived. Gibby! The Sack. You guys remember Snuggies? Well, The Sack is basically a parody of The Snuggie. It's a sketch on the iCarly webcast all about advertising The Sack. You could order your sack by calling 1555 send me a sack or go to sendmeasack.com. Not a real product. Order now and you'll receive a picture of a 1996 penny. The Sack comes in rash red, mucus green, pus yellow, or blue. And you could do so much with The Sack according to the iCarly wiki, like making dinner, surfing the web, showering, enjoying hot bowls of chowder, poking Spencer with your nose because your hands are unavailable, going shopping except you probably get charged with a fine for knocking over a shelf of tomato sauce, looking at your photo of a 1996 penny, and playing with your pets in its pet sack. Wow, that sounds gross. Bottlebot. Bottlebot is one of Spencer's sculptures made out of soda bottles. It was created in the pilot episode, and since that moment, it's been featured in practically every single episode in the background of the Shea apartment. And even in the revival, the Bottlebot is seen in the background of Spencer's apartment. However, it's a replica, but it's still pretty cool to see. Wade Collins. Wade Michael Collins is a giant douchebag and a twit. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. What I meant to say is that he is featured in the episode I Rocked the Vote. He is a rude competitor on a singing competition called America Sings, which is just a parody knockoff of American Idol. He hates America, he hates children, he hates teenagers, and he hates animals. Oh, and he really likes using the word hobnocker as an insult. Fan of Hammers. The Fan of Hammers is a sculpture made by Spencer, which is shown off in the episode I Want to Stay with Spencer. When turned on, the fan goes crazy, like a seven-year-old in a Chuck E. Cheese parking lot after eating the candy from Charles the Rat's pockets, ultimately sending one of the hammers off the rails and towards Carly's head, almost killing her. You could even see the hammer in the background of various different episodes after this event. Skunk bag. Skunk bag is the term used in iCarly as an insult. It's like slut bag or skank or skank bag if you want to be that type of person. Funny enough, it's actually used in Drake and Josh and Zoe 101, specifically the episodes We're Married and Chase's Girlfriend. Sunshine Girls. The Sunshine Girls are a knockoff of the real life Girl Scouts. They're featured in the episode I Owe You and in the revival episode I Need Space. And that, my friends, was just the upper body of the iceberg. Gibby spinoff canceled. The Gibby spinoff synopsis was essentially Gibby getting a job at a recreational facility and becoming a mentor of sorts for a few middle schoolers. Unfortunately, only a pilot was created and that, as far as we know, was never released to the public. The Gibby show just never made it to the spotlight, which is unfortunate because we all know that Gibby was the most important character in the entire iCarly, Dan, Foot Toucher, Schneider cinematic universe. The script for the episode was archived online in case any of you longtime Gibby fans want to check out what could have been a real Nickel Nickelodeon staple. Nickelodeon shared sitcom universe. Dan Foot Toucher Schneider was the mastermind behind all of the Nickelodeon classics like Zoe 101, iCarly, Victorious, Drake and Josh, Sam and Cat, and more. But what if I told you that Nickelodeon was doing a cinematic universe before Marvel ever even considered the idea? Well, we know that iCarly and Victorious are set in the same timeline because of the episode I Party with Victorious, and Zoe 101 is connected to the same universe as iCarly because you could see tons of the characters on the iCarly website throughout the entire show. Keenan Thompson appears in the iCarly Victorious collab special, which means that Keenan and Kel also exist in that universe. Drake and Josh is a bit tricky though. In Sam and Cat, iCarly, and Victorious, Drake and Josh is referred to as a TV show. However, Helen, the movie theater boss from Drake and Josh, shows up in an episode of Victorious as Hollywood Art its new principle. So it seems to me like Drake and Josh is canon in this universe, but as a reality show. Oh, Drake Bell also makes an appearance in Zoe 101 as himself. And of course, there's also connections to Dan's later shows like Henry Danger and Game Shakers, but those shows were terrible, so I'm not gonna even talk about them ever again. Like, don't get me wrong, Sam and Cat is terrible, but let's not get it twisted. That show is canon in that timeline, and we have to at least respect it. Henry Danger and Game Shakers and all those other crappy shows, get, get out of here. Why Gibby isn't in the iCarly revival? According to Gibby's ex, 
actor Noah Monk, he felt that his character was the punching bag and the expense of the joke on the series, which is ultimately true. And unfortunately, that stigma followed him even after the show ended. The same thing can be said about Tom Holland, for example. Like, everyone knows him as Spider-Man, even if he stars in another movie like Uncharted. Fans will only see an actor as the character they play and not for who they really are. Noah did state that maybe one day he'll have a better relationship with the show and that he might be open to coming back, but as of now, it appears that he will not link up with his old castmate. Pam Puckett. Pam Puckett, the mother of Sam and Melanie. She was only featured in the episode I, Sam's Mom and was played by actress Jane Lynch. Her character was also briefly featured in the episode I Shock America. However, she was played by a different actress and her face wasn't shown. Besides those two instances, Pam is mentioned throughout the entire iCarly series. She's been engaged 18 times. She's very irresponsible. She likes Italian guys. Uh, hey, hey Pam, how's it going by the way? I'm John. I'm 22. Um, hit me up. Despite her terrible negligence, she loves her daughters and would do anything for them. Um, well sometimes. Rick and Josh show exists in the iCarly universe. As previously mentioned with the Nickelodeon shared sitcom universe, Rick and Josh is canon in the iCarly universe but as a reality TV show. In the episode I Get Pranky, Carly literally watches Megan from Drake and Josh pull a prank on Drake and Josh for messing with her hamster, Hervé. And by the way, you didn't kill Hervé. The camera flash just stunned him. There's tons of other references like Spencer watching Crazy Steve in a scene yelling, Use the map, Dora! From the Drake and Josh episode, The Storm. Oh, Dora, it's right over there! Over oh, Ramos and David Schwimmer dies. In the iCarly universe, there is a reality show called Celebrities Underwater, and David Schwimmer, the actor from Friends, was a contestant. While Freddy is watching the show, he says that David isn't moving, meaning that he probably drowned, to which Freddy says, I guess there'll never be a Friends reunion. Luckily, that was only in the iCarly universe and not the real life universe that you and I currently exist in. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten that Poggers Friends reunion. Freddy's Spanish outbursts. There is no underlying reason to Freddy's random Spanish outbursts. Throughout the iCarly show, Freddy just randomly shouts out Spanish words. However, there is a theory as to why Freddy just suddenly turns into Ricky Ricardo for My Love Lucy. No Freddy has a tracking chip inside of his brain that his mother had implanted by a Venezuelan doctor while he was just a toddler, and it's essentially a tracking device, and we first hear about it, like I mentioned before, in the TV movie I Go to Japan. Well, the theory states that the chip is malfunctioning and is somehow giving Freddy the ability to be bilingual. Besides that theory, there is no proper explanation other than Freddy just likes Spanish class. Five, six, or seven seasons. There has been a constant debate over whether the original iCarly series had five, six, or even seven seasons. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you Google how many seasons seasons iCarly had, Google says six. So let's just go with six seasons. There were six seasons in total, and there was no more, and there was no less. Rip off Rodney. Rip off Rodney, full name Rodney Goober, is a student merchant at Ridgeway High School. He sells questionable items like burritos and concert tickets. The reason why he is called Rip off Rodney is because of the outrageous prices he sells his products for. He only makes two appearances in the entire series, I Don't Want to Fight, and I Got Detention. Mrs. Benson Wants a Daughter. In the episode I Give Away a Car, we find out that Freddy has a jewelry box because Mrs. Benson wanted a daughter. My mom wanted a daughter. Bigfoot is real. In the episode I Believe in Bigfoot, we see the gang go out to Mount Baker National Forest in search of Bigfoot, but instead find Dr. Sidney Van Gruben dressed up as Bigfoot in order to promote his book Bigfoot. True or real? However, at the end of the episode, someone steals the iCarly's RV, and it turns out it was Bigfoot. Really gonna stand around thinking Bigfoot stole our RV? You wish it was water. In the episode I reunite with Missy, Chuck, the little bastard, locks up Spencer in his storage facility and sprays him with a suspicious liquid. It was never specified what was in the squirt gun, but some people believe it to be either vinegar or urine. And if you want my honest opinion, my money is on piss. Is this water? You wish it was water? Penny Tees. Penny Tees is a shirt company run by Sako's sister, Penny. She started the company back in 2002. Characters are seen throughout the entire iCarly series wearing Penny Tees with random phrases or words plastered on the front. Some of the most notable phrases seen on the t-shirts are Uncle Female, Liquid Chicken, and Ointment 500. Kiwi Babies. Kiwi Babies are a parody of Beanie Babies, which are little collectible stuffed animals, mainly for young girls, but I had some as a kid. In the episode I Date a Bad Boy, we can see that Griffin has a whole ass collection of Kiwi Kiwi Babies, which turns Carly completely off. Locker 239. In the episode I Must Have Locker 239, we could see a locker known only as Locker 239, which is known to be the coolest, the biggest locker in all of Ridgeway High. The school held a contest to see how many fat cakes were in a large jar, and the winner got the locker. Of course, Sam and Freddy guessed the correct amount, which was 2,718 fat cakes, and had to share the locker together until Freddy paid Sam 200 bucks for the locker. And then Sam's mom drove through the school into the 
locker, destroying it, which left Freddy with nothing. No money, no bitches, no locker, big sad. Gibby's restaurant. Gibby found the empty basement of Ridgeway High and decided to turn it into a restaurant known only as Gibby's. Gibby partners with Sam, who specializes in hot meats, and the menu consists of hot meat sandwiches, garlic bread, cheese bread, spaghetti carbonara, fries, tots, lemonade, and red pepper lemonade if you're feeling extra clogged up. Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, not the actor, is the name of Carly's old piece of shit car in the revival series. Carly's car breaks down, she calls a mechanic named Wes who tells Carly to just buy a new vehicle because fixing Vin Diesel would be way too expensive, and Carly refuses because she's stubborn. She decides to take an automotive class to learn how to fix her car, and the teacher ends up being, you guessed it, Wes. Carly accuses Wes of giving people false hope, Wes only wants to empower people, Carly gets covered with oil like a porn star, and she ends up trying to fix her own car but fails and calls Wes for help and admits that she loves the car because her and Sam spent a lot of time in it together and she doesn't want to let it go. In the end, the car ends up dying, but Spencer preserves the car by repainting it and keeping it in the iCarly studio. How sweet. Obviously that whole summary was just my way of explaining it, you have to go watch the full episode to kind of fully understand it. I may be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. In the episode I date a bad boy when Spencer catches Carly and Griffin trying to pull a fast one on him, he appears and says the line, I may be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. Which is just a giant oxymoron, like it makes no sense. Do you sell smoothies? In the episode I Sam's mom, two blondes walk into the groovy smoothie and ask Tebow if he sells smoothies, to which Tebow just strokes out and loses all hope for humanity. Hey, what can I get you little lady today? Do you sell smoothies? Do I? What? I know you have a crush on me. In the episode I Toe Fat Kicks, Sam nags Spencer about the long wait, and while Spencer explains the situation with passing through customs, Sam cuts him off by saying blah blah blah, to which then Spencer says, I know you have a crush on me. What's Gibby thinking about? What's Gibby thinking about is a segment on iCarly.com featuring Gibby daydreaming about different things, and this wacky segment ended up becoming a very popular meme on the internet, like people left and right were creating their own Gibby thought videos. <laughs> I like getting plowed in my ass while I play Overwatch. Spencer cross-dressing. Spencer has been known to wear women's clothes throughout the original series, and apparently he'll be returning to those roots in season two of the revival, which is just fantastic news. Netflix episodes are out of order. According to some users on Reddit, the iCarly episodes available on Netflix are or were out of order at one point. Not sure if they were fixed or not, but at least about a year ago, a user on Reddit reported that some of the episodes are mixed up and or missing. This user guesses that the order is based on production order instead of story order, which could be the case, but it's still pretty annoying if you want to see the episodes in order without having to physically grab your remote and change to the correct episode. How can Spencer afford the apartment? There are a lot of theories as to how Spencer could afford a three-floor apartment with a private elevator. One theory, and this is the dumb one, is that TV show sitcoms always take place in big apartments because of technical limitation. Essentially, it's hard to film in tight spaces and backyards are hard to recreate on set. Another theory is that Carly and Spencer's dad helps pay for the apartment, maybe a government funded apartment. Spencer is an artist, so he probably makes a decent living selling his art. Like, he might even be into stocks and crypto too, who knows. We do know that in the Revival series, Spencer is a multi-millionaire who now owns the apartment, so I mean, we'll, we'll probably never get an answer as to how Spencer really afforded the apartment beforehand. Why Freddy randomly speaks Spanish. As I previously mentioned, the theory is that Freddy's chip implanted by that Venezuelan doctor is malfunctioning and is giving Freddy the ability to speak Spanish. <laughs> I kiss. Oh boy, it's a Creddy episode. The plot of the episode starts off with Freddy getting revenge on Sam for putting a dead fish in his locker by handcuffing her to Gibby, which is basically a cardinal sin. Later on, Sam and Carly return from seeing a film called The First Kiss, and the girls talk about it with Freddy, which leads into a discussion of who had their first kiss. Everyone says yes, Sam goes out to buy food and leaves the room, and Freddy confesses to Carly that he never had a real kiss. Sam overhears the conversation from outside the iCarly studio and uses this newfound knowledge to seek revenge on Freddy for the Gibby stunt. Next Die Carly webcast, Sam admits to the whole world that Freddy has never kissed a girl. Freddy is mortified and embarrassed. He shows up to school the next day and just gets bombarded with terrible, nasty comments which leave him super insecure, eventually pushing him to leave school and not show up for the rest of the week. He was even going to skip out on the next iCarly webcast because Sam really broke him. Carly forces Sam to fix the situation. Sam goes to Freddy's apartment, they talk. Turns out that Sam lied as well and never had a real first kiss either. They each agree to kiss each other and they make up. I start over. I start over is the first 
first episode of the iCarly Revival series. I am now going to read the entire plot word for word from the iCarly wiki because there is no f***ing way in hell that I could just easily summarize this episode plot up. Wait, I lied. I'm not doing it. It's way too long. Let me see if I could summarize this plot in like five words. Carly gets dumped by her boyfriend and then she becomes depressed for like a month. Oh, within the first five seconds of the episode, you get to see Spencer's bare ass. Remember the episode of the original series where the guy's got a world record for creating a sculpture with like a bunch of crap on it? Well, in the last 10 years, somebody stole that record from Spencer, so he's trying to get it back by adding more crap to that original sculpture. Uh, Freddy has a kid and is divorced twice. Carly goes out with some other guy to make her original ex-boyfriend jealous. They end up going back into the original iCarly studio and recreating a baby Spencer bit. Yeah, I think we covered all the main plot points of that episode. Carly's bunny drawing. The subplot of the episode, I Must Have Locker 239, Carly takes art lessons and draws a piss poor excuse for a bunny which looks like a cross between a rat and a tumor. Miss Ackerman. Lauren Ackerman, now a former history teacher of Ridgeway Middle School, was featured in the episode I Have a Love Sick Teacher. She's essentially a psychotic person who really scared me a bit as a child. She's miserable when she gets dumped, but is happy and cheerful when she gets together with somebody. Sounds peachy on paper, but wait until you see how crazy she gets towards her significant other. Messing with Lubert. Messing with Lubert is a segment on the iCarly webcast where Carly and Sam pull a series of pranks on the mean, nasty, vile doorman of Bushwell Plaza. Sam's numerous nicknames for Freddy. Throughout iCarly, you'll hear Sam refer to Freddy as many different nicknames like The Doof, Dork, Geek, Little Punk, Witchy Poo, Nub Nub, Nerd, Tech, Talking Witch Boy, Weenie, Whiz Pants, Circus Boy, Pink Shorts, Benson, Fred Weird, Fredison, Hobnocker, Fredderly, Fredication, Fudge Face, Queen of the Jerks, The Boy, Fredifer, Fredhead, Freddio, Fredly, Fred Dork, Dipthong, Fishrag, Fredicini, Fredamame Benson, Tech Boy, Fred Puss, Diphead, Mama's Boy, Fred Bag, Crutchy, Fredalupe, Fredwitch, Fredenstein, Stunt Brag, Little Boy, Fred Wiener, Dude, Internet Boy, Scudder, Baby, Freddy Fish, Tigler, Benson, Pretty Boy, This One, Frednar, Young Freddy, That, Fredder, Freddish, Rod, Fruit Bull, Idiot, Clown, and Freddo. Good God, I want to die. There's probably more nicknames, but I think you get the point. Whose banana is this? Do I really need to explain this? <laughs> Jimmy, how did you- I, I have no idea. Hey, what am I sitting on? Hey, what am I sitting on is a segment on the iCarly webcast where essentially someone is blindfolded and has to sit on a mysterious item and has to guess what they're sitting on. Kids Choice Awards segment. Back in 2008, the iCarly gang took over the KCAs and they filmed a ton of segments that you could easily find on YouTube. Obsession with hobos. Hobos are mentioned throughout the show because for some unknown, unholy reason, Dan Foot Toucher Schneider had a fixation on them. According to the iCarly wiki, hobos were not mentioned after season 4 due to complaints about class. One example of hobos being mentioned in iCarly is the episode I Enraged Gibby where Carly throws a hobo-themed party. Victorious was meant to replace iCarly. I wouldn't call Victorious a replacement to iCarly. Like, if Victorious is a replacement for iCarly, then wouldn't iCarly be the replacement for Drake and Josh and even Zoe 101? I think that Dan Foot Toucher Schneider likes to create new projects. He probably didn't want to get stuck in the same loop for years on a single project. Introducing a new show while phasing out the current project helps viewers adapt easily to a new show. I got a hot room. Season 4 episode 1, I got a hot room special. Carly just turned 16 years old, Spencer made her a gummy bear lamp, but it caught on fire because Spencer has the unfortunate ability to bend fire against his will. Carly gets a job at the Groovy Smoothie to afford to fix her room. She's devastated and so is Spencer. However, a watch inherited from their great-grandmother burned in the fire, so Spencer got a reimbursement check for $82,000 and used it to hire a massive crew and rebuild Carly's room, which was pretty badass. I Go Nuclear. I Go Nuclear, also known as I Go Green, is the Earth Day episode of iCarly. Sam, Freddy, and Carly have to make environmentally friendly science fair projects for Green Week. Carly plans on making a diorama, or if you're dyslexic, diarrhea, of worms compositing soil, but she is too afraid of worms to make it. Freddy makes an exquisitely fancy one with worms imported from Portugal, which disappoints Carly into just fashioning an old environmentally friendly scooter with a car battery, which only goes four miles an hour and shorts out in the rain. Freddy and Carly don't do well, although they make projects ordinary teachers would approve of, but not their eccentric teacher, Mr. Henning, on the grounds that Freddy's worms were flown in on an airplane and Carly's car battery requires a huge amount of power to charge. While Sam gets an A by doing an improvised speech on biodegradable packaging while eating an orange, having prepared nothing beforehand. To avoid going on the root and berry retreat for extra credit alongside Freddy, Carly gets a week to make new projects. With the help of a physics expert named Cal, Carly builds an environmentally friendly generator and uses it to power an episode of iCarly. But when it turns out that Cal is a wanted criminal and 
built an illegal nuclear reactor, Carly has to go on the retreat to get a decent grade. Frothy the Cat. Frothy the Cat is Sam's rabbit three-legged cat, and it was only featured in the episode I Make Sam Girlier, where on the iCarly webcast, they morphed Carly's face with Frothy to make an evil furry hybrid. Good God, shoot it in the head. Detective Stu Spanky Stimbler. Stu Stimbler is a childhood bully of Spencer, specifically back in Sleepaway Camp. He's kind of a jerk off, if you want me to be perfectly honest with all of you. All this guy does is spank people for no reason, which is how he got the nickname Spanky. He's only featured in the episode I Stakeout, where he's one of the two police officers hibernating in the Shea apartment while observing the pirated DVD guy across the street. Kelly Cooper Terrible Movie. Kelly Cooper Terrible Movie was a sketch on the iCarly webcast shown in the episode I Kiss. The iCarlys were inspired to make it after just seeing the lame romantic movie The First Kiss. Kelly Cooper, Carly, is a klutzy girl who wants to become popular, but a mean girl named Natalie, Sam, doesn't want her to fit in. Kelly then changes her outfits, meets the boy of her dreams, Chad, played by Gibby, and in the end has a party. Natalie shows up and is shocked to see that Kelly is now popular. She is mocked by Chad and Kelly, and she runs away screaming. Can you return it? In the episode I Twins, Freddy noticed that Carly got a new necklace. She asked if he liked it, to which Freddy asked, can you return it? Carly says no, and Freddy says, it's nice. Oyster Mato. In the episode I Space Out, Spencer tries to drink a glass of Oyster Mato to see what it tastes like, despite the fact that he hates both oysters and tomatoes, according to Carly. Oyster Mato is basically a parody of Mott's Clamato. Damn, I'm hungry now. FNAF reference. In the episode I Pie, Freddy can be seen wearing a bear suit, and according to Nickelodeon's Facebook page, this was a reference to Five Nights at Freddy's. And that, my friends, was just the lower body of the iceberg. Maybe stunt double broke his ribs. On an episode of the official podcast, Noah Monk recalled the time his stunt double broke his ribs and almost died. During the season 4 episode, I get pranky when the gang tries to give Spencer some payback. We could see a clip of Gibby falling from the ceiling to the hard concrete floor, followed by uttering the phrase, Did you guys hear my ribs crack? Luckily, that wasn't actually Gibby who fell, but a trained professional stunt double. Unfortunately for the stunt double, according to Noah Monk, he suffered some damage. And I'll just play a snippet from the podcast so you guys can hear it first hand from Noah. Okay, so there's like, there's that meme where I fall and die, that <laughs> Gibby dies, he hits the floor really hard, it's funny. But yeah, that stunt was, was, that guy like broke all his ribs or something? I think <laughs> <he's really laughs> like, man, I'm supposed to fall from the ceiling and just hit the ground and get the wind knocked out of me, but dude, that guy hit that fucking ground. <laughs> Wait, he was actually just- assassinate you. Yeah, in the script, he was actually supposed to just fall onto the ground with no safety or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no safety. Yeah, I just fall from the ceiling because it's like I missed some. I'm, 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 I'm missed gonna some highly f***ing recommend that anyone curious check out the clip on YouTube. This is a brutal f***ing stunt fall. Yeah, is Sam Jewish? In the episode I Bust a Thief, it's mentioned that Sam's laptop was a bat mitzvah gift from her grandmother, which either means that she is Jewish or that her grandmother thinks that she's Jewish. Mitch. Mitch is Carly's guardian angel who appears in the episode I Christmas, and the point of Mitch visiting Carly was to teach her a lesson and earn his angel wings, or I guess chicken wings. Wings. Gibby's head. Gibby's head is a fake head of Gibby, obviously, which appeared in the episode I Still Psycho and periodically returns in future episodes as a running gag. Gibby ended up selling the head to the Pawn Stars cast in Vegas to make some money to bail out Sam's mom from jail, but ended up getting another one at the mall in I Goodbye. Gibby hitting Spencer with a stop sign. In the episode I April Fools, Gibby randomly assaults Spencer with a stop sign, and it just became a massive meme among fans and internet users. Like, there's so many variants of this meme that I can't even even find the original clip, so enjoy this Minecraft version of the meme. Look, you guys, let's not work. I April Fools. I April Fools is the first episode of season five and the biggest cluster of an episode in modern sitcom history. Carly and Spencer are being evicted from their apartment, so they decide to throw one more party and remember the good old times, and uh, Tebow is a genie for some reason. Their memories get crazy and distorted as if you took a dive into the brain of a six-year-old with a meth addiction, and of course, Gibby assaults Spencer with the stop sign. Eventually, the gang convinces the owner of the Bushwell Plaza building to let them stay. Honestly, this episode was really crazy and hectic and chaotic, and I'm just happy that the episode exists solely because of the Gibby mean, but, but damn, a majority of this episode really hurts to watch. Chip. Chip Chambers is the nine-year-old brother of Chuck, who is either as terrifying or worse than his brother. He makes an appearance in the episode I Battle Chip, where essentially Chip is pissed at Spencer for having his brother Chuck sent to military school. He's basically out for revenge. Ricky Flame. Ricky Flame is a knockoff Gordon Ramsay who appears in the episode I Cook. He's a very selfish butthurt chef. When he lost in a cooking competition to the iCarly gang, he moaned and weeped about it because he had never lost before. He decided 
decided after that moment to cancel his entire food fight show and just continued to bitch and complain. Eventually the iCarly's try and cheer him up and push him to get back out there into the world and he ends up joining a wrestling program for younger kids and just kicks the snot out of those kids. And even though Ricky Flame feels good about winning at something again, the iCarly's realize that it's morally f***ed up for an older man to be kicking the shit out of young kids in a wrestling competition so then Sam kicks the snot out of him and he goes back to crying which nobody cares about. Girly Cow Uncensored. Apparently there is both a censored and uncensored version of Girly Cow and Spencer is apparently a big fan of the uncensored version. So that probably means that the uncensored version of Girly Cow censors curse words for its younger demographic. Michelle Obama was originally just a cameo. So I'm not 100% positive on what exactly this means but let me take a swing at it. Michelle Obama wasn't originally supposed to be featured on the iCarly webcast. Apparently she was only a cameo for the episode where she shows up to the iCarly apartment. Michelle Obama watched the iCarly TV show with Sasha and Malia, her daughters, and she asked the producers of the show if she could join the iCarly's beyond that little cameo and stick around for their webcast and do some random dancing, which was really cool. Bagless. In the episode I Balls, yes, that's a real episode name, Carly went to Yakima so Sam needed a fill-in host and Freddie offered, but Sam said she would rather host the show with a garbage bag full of yogurt, and thus Bagless was bored. Bagless made a few more cameos in the episodes I Shock America and I Find Spencer Friends. Netflix low effort subtitles. According to this Reddit user, the Netflix subtitles for iCarly were piss poor and very broken. Now this was reported over a year ago, so I went on to Netflix recently to check the subtitles now to see if they were still allegedly broken, but they seem to be fixed for the particular episode this person was referring to, so I guess at one point the subtitles for iCarly were broken on Netflix, but as of now, they seem to be working. IOMG. Season 4, episode 10, I Oh My God, or IOMG, ooh it's another credit episode, is all about the build up to the famous kiss between Sam Puckett and Freddie Benson. The iCarlys are locked in Ridgeway High for 12 hours overnight to finish up their semester project. Sam has been acting funky lately. He joins Freddy and iCarly's new intern Brad on a project they've been developing called Moodface, which is essentially an app that reveals whether you're in love or not. Sam tested out the app and sure enough, she was in love, which explains why she's been acting weird lately. Everyone thought that she was into Brad, but it turns out that Sam was in love with Fredward Benson and kissed him outside the school. OMG. Fans were freaking out when this episode came out. I mean, even preteen Johnny Boy was like losing his shit. Of course, this isn't the first time these two have kissed, but this was still a pinnacle moment in the iCarly series. I Think They Kissed. Season 3 episode 1, I Think They Kissed, is a direct sequel to the episode I Kiss. This episode follows up to the first Freddy and Sam kiss which took place on Freddy's fire escape. Basically, Sam loses a tooth during a webcast and has to go to the dentist. Sam gets put under some wacky gas and tells Carly that her and Freddy kiss. Carly starts freaking out and wonders why neither Sam or Freddy told her. While all of this is happening, Spencer is teaching some prisoners how to make art and they opt to make a large pair of pants. Spencer then takes the giant pair of pants home with two prisoners inside. Carly, Sam, and Freddy standing in front of the giant pants sculpture in the Shea apartment are arguing with each other about why neither Sam or Freddy told Carly about the kiss. The prisoners end up tying up the three iCarlys to a chair and eventually they work out their secret telling issues. The Englishman who was a terrible father to his two children named Fluffly and Pita. The Englishman who was a terrible father to his two children named Fluffly and Pita was a bit a part of a larger segment called Pathetic Plays on the iCarly webcast. This pathetic play is seen multiple times in season 3. It stars an English man played by Gibby who is a terrible father to his two children, I'm sure some of you can relate to that, named Fluffly and Pita, played by Sam and Freddy, and Spencer also stars as Baby Lumpley later on. The prisoner who just wanted some soup and the man who refused to give him some. The prisoner who just wanted some soup and the man who refused to give him some was another bit a part of the pathetic play segment of the iCarly webcast. This bit was written by Sam and there are only two lines in the entire sketch. The prisoner Sam says, just give me some soup, to which the man portrayed by Carly said, I ain't gonna give you no soup. And these two lines are repeated two more times. Magic Malika. Magic Malika was Freddy's date to the girl's choice dance in the episode I Speed Date. He's pretty much in line with that one Wiccan witchcraft girl who sits alone in your cafeteria at school, which by the way, go make friends with her. He's probably very nice. Malika will perform magic tricks and uh, well, we already know what happens next. How did you- I- I have no idea. I Toe Fat Cakes. Season 4, episode 24, I Toe Fat Cakes is all about Sam and her love for fat cakes. Sam didn't get in trouble for 10 whole days, so Carly, Freddy, and Spencer rewarded her with a ticket to tour the Fat Cakes World Headquarters in Canada. She ends up getting in trouble for trying to smuggle Canadian fat cakes, which are illegal in the United States, over the border. Spencer helps her out, but she can't get back into the United States because she doesn't have an ID on her. Gibby gets the idea to smuggle Sam across the border in his suitcase, but his suitcase gets switched with someone else's, and Sam ends up on a flight to Malaysia. And if you're wondering about what Carly does this entire episode, don't worry. She got her toe stuck in her
her bath faucet because Dan Foot Toucher Schneider needed that extra foot shot for his collection. Ginger Fox. Ginger Fox is a fictional American singer in the episode I Fix a Pop Star. She's essentially a parody of Britney Spears. Her music video for her song Hate Me, Love Me was the number one most viewed video of all time in the iCurly universe. She also has a son named Billy. Oh, and also she has really bad anger issues and even throws a fork at Freddy's shoulder. Freddy doesn't say the one. Freddy before the start of a webcast will count down from five and will go down to two but never says one. He says five, four, three, two because the camera starts rolling at one. So if he were to say one, the microphone would pick it up and that just wouldn't sound right. Addition of C, D, E, and F plots. In the beginning of the iCarly series, each episode would have a main plot and a subplot or an A plot and B plot. A subplot just fills in the void or empty space that the main plot isn't occupying just to fill in the 20 minute episode runtime. However, later in the series, the creators started to get a bit ballsy. Best example that I could give you guys is that in the episode I Start a Fan War, plot A revolves around Carly trying to calm down their fans before they tear each other apart over the Creddy Seti drama. Plot B revolves around Spencer and Jack Black LARPing for like an hour. And plot C is Gibby and Guppy and Mr. Gibson in a drive through trying to get some soup that just doesn't exist. This was a prime example of an A, B, and C plot episode. 200 Pillows. Spencer accidentally orders 200 pillows in the episode I Want My Website Back. Furry Joke 2021 Revival. In the iCarly Revival, we could see two instances of Harper being interested in a furry kink. I'll just show you. Y'all doing like a furry thing. Yep. No. Yeah, when I first saw this scene when the episode came out, I nearly pissed my pants like a little girl with a bladder infection. Like, this was one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen in television history, or I guess the history of my life. Oh, credit to this guy for the last clip, by the way. Drake Bell and I Bloop. In the first blooper special for iCarly, we see a guest appearance from Drake Bell. Yikes. In this scene, Drake is actually in character as Drake Parker from Drake and Josh and starts questioning his reality. Just take a look. Hey, nigga. Uh, I don't believe I know you. Where's Josh? Noah Monk was younger than his character. Noah was 11 years old when he joined the iCarly cast, which means that he was the youngest of the entire main cast. iCarly's first few years takes place during late middle school or junior high, and the rest of his castmates like Carly and Freddie were 14 when the show first started. That would mean that Gibby's character would have to have been somewhere around the age of 14 or 15. Little Girl in I Space Out. In the episode I Space Out, the main plot surrounds Carly, Sam, and Freddie competing in a competition to become the first webcast in space. The B plot of this episode is that a little mysterious girl shows up in Spencer's apartment. Originally, Spencer thought that it was just a fragment of his imagination, but at the end of the episode, when Carly returns after failing the competition, she notices the girl as well, making her very real and very, very scary. Remember to lock all the doors of your home, and please, if you see this girl roaming around your property, call the police and prepare to fight, because this girl is very dangerous. Probably not. The History of Yellow. In the episode I Must Have Locker 239, Spencer is teaching Carly about the history of yellow. He assigns her to draw hobos in the park for three hours, and he wakes her up at 2.30 a.m. to sketch his stinky green foot. Eventually, Carly goes to a new art teacher and Spencer gets upset he's spaghetti about it. But yeah, that's where the history of the color yellow came from. I totally didn't spend like six hours trying to figure out where the hell this quote even came from. The Fence and Bensons. The Fence and Bensons were a group of talented fencers who performed for the Tingling Brothers Circus in the iCarly universe. The best fencer of the group was Freddie Benson's great-grandfather. Guess fencing must be a genetic trait because Freddie and his mom kicked some major ass in the episode I Fence. Hobnocker. The term hobnocker was used used by a douchebag named Wade Collins as an insult towards people. Ever since the episode I Rocked the Vote, fans have been wondering what exactly a hobnocker means. Well, there's a few definitions. According to Urban Dictionary, a hobnocker is when a guy hits you in the face with his penis. It's also when a person partakes in bestiality. Gross. I'm looking at you, Sappho. It's also a hobo who knocks on your door, waits for you to open a door, sprints into your house, steals all your food, and runs out the back door. Spencer's Vision, hugging Nug Nug from Galaxy Wars. In the episode I Cook, Spencer has a vision of the near future where Nug Nug from Galaxy Wars hugs him in the groovy smoothie, which actually happens right at the end of the episode. Turns out Nug Nug had a similar vision of hugging Spencer at the groovy smoothie. Jamama. Jamama is Sam and Melanie's grandmother. She had a non-speaking role in the episode I Meet Fred, where she can be seen making a horse noise with her mouth, to which Sam jokes that she is part horse. Crazy fruit dude. In the episode I Stake Out, the suspect selling pirated DVDs that the Seattle Police Department is after can be seen walking behind a guy known only as Crazy.
crazy fruit dude during the segment. Who's that weirdo in my neighborhood? Green haired old lady who sucks on a pacifier. In the same episode I stake out as part of the who's that weirdo in my neighborhood bit, crazy fruit dude became the new reigning champion, beating out a person known only as green haired old lady who sucks on a baby pacifier. World's fattest priest. Father McGurthy is the world's fattest priest and Sam was very obsessed with him in the episode I Want a World Record. He fell through the floor halfway outside the iCarly apartment when he was on his way to meet Sam. Honestly, the guy just looks like Mike Lindell if he stayed on crack, but that's just me. And that, my friends, was the deep point of the iceberg. Spencer's Book Club. In the episode I Party with Victorious, Carly, Sam, and Freddy got home early from school because of a gas leak and find Spencer hosting a book club with a ton of pretty middle-aged women. Honestly, it might have been the start to an orgy. I mean, that or he really enjoys reading books with women, but who knows. AggressiveParenting.com. In the episode I Look Alike, Freddy's mom states that further exposure to violence is bad for a teenage boy's development. When Sam asks where she got that information from, Mrs. Benson replied with, I read it on AggressiveParenting.com. What scenes? Dan Schneider, the creator of iCarly, Drake and Josh, Hazoe 101, and more, has faced allegations from viewers over the last few years of having a massive foot fetish and even having his young stars take part in scenes involving feet for his own pleasure. Dan claims that the comedy was innocent and that he thinks children find feet to be funny, but, uh, Dan, well, what the f*** is this, man? Like, I know I'm a grown-ass adult, but I never found feet to be funny. This is just weird, man. What did the goat do? In the episode I Got a Hot Room, Carly mentions that during a previous birthday, a goat goat did something pretty weird to her. So weird that it's never implied what exactly happened. According to the writers, nobody really knows what exactly the goat did to Carly. It's just one of those vague moments that you get to interpret any way you want. Maybe the goat peed on her. Maybe it humped her. Maybe it stood on two legs and Mike Tyson the snot out of her. I mean, who even knows? The Robot Wedding. I Robot Wedding is the fifth episode of the iCarly revival series, and it basically revolves around Neville inviting the group to his wedding, but Carly suspects that the bride is actually a robot. The wedding theme is also future and robot based. Colonel Shea is hiding something. Honestly, I can't find anything on this statement. I, I can't find anything regarding a secret that Stephen Shea is hiding or a fan theory or anything. Maybe this involves the controversy of why an Air Force guy is on a submarine with the Navy. Maybe it has something to do with Carly's missing mother. I have no freaking idea. I mean, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I quit iCarly. Carly and Sam agree to help Fleck and Dave, two aspiring web comedians, to make a video for a competition. However, the boy Boys get into a fight and furiously break up. Fleck infuriates Dave's short-tempered dad by spray-painting his car purple, which prompts him to punish Dave by destroying his laptop with a hammer. Carly and Sam try to get them to make up by talking to Dave and Fleck respectively, but while talking to them, they see that Fleck is an irresponsible risk-taker like Sam, and Dave is a much more responsible and cautious planner like Carly, leading to the girls relating to their boy counterparts. Having become aware of how frustrating the other can be to work with, Carly and Sam get into a fight as well, causing a rift between them. It quickly escalates when they get into another fight at the Groovy smoothie and that ends with Carly banning Sam from her house. Carly, Sam, and Freddy tried to do iCarly by broadcasting from the studio in Sam's house simultaneously, but problems with the connection plus their ongoing fight lead to the webcast being a disaster. A frustrated Carly suggests ending iCarly for good and Sam agrees, much to Freddy's dismay. At school the next day, they even fight over who gets Freddy's help in making a video for the competition Fleck and Dave originally wanted to enter. This breaks Freddy's heart and he expresses a desire for things between the girls to return to the way they were. Eventually, they both get the same idea to take shots of the city at night from a window washing platform on the top 14th floor of Bushwell Plaza. When they show up at the same time, Carly and Sam get into a fight over who gets to go first onto the platform without a safety harness. After Sam accidentally hits a button to lower the scaffold, it breaks and Carly slips off, forcing her to grab onto a pole for dear life. Sam saves Carly from falling to her death, only to almost fall herself when Spencer drops a rope down onto her head. Carly pulls her up, they tie themselves together, and with the combined efforts of Spencer, Freddie, Fleck, and Dave, the girls are pulled up to safety. Realizing what could have happened to them, they break down crying at each other other's arms and reconcile. Fleck and Dave do the same, and Freddie and Spencer hug as well. With iCarly back together, they continue to do the show as the iCarly trio with Fleck and Dave and Gibby making a fake horror trailer for a hurricane disaster movie called The Blowing. Oh, and if you're wondering about the subplot, Spencer wins a boat and him and Gibby get assaulted by a bunch of baseball players or something. The Frank and Toaster Show. Apparently in the episode I Enrage Gibby, Carly and Sam start a webcast but introduce it in a much different way. Carly says she's Frank and Sam says that she's Toaster, and then they both proceed to say that iCarly is the Frank and Toaster show. Kevin Colt plus Jackson. 
Jackson Colt. Jackson Colt is a top 10 MMA fighter in the iCarly universe who is a big fan of the iCarly webcast, and he also has a son called Kevin Colt. They only appear in the episode I Look Alike, where Carly, Sam, and Freddy sneak out to see the MMA event featuring Jackson and have to hire people to dress up like themselves in order to fool Spencer and Mrs. Benson into thinking that they never left the apartment for the MMA fight. 302. In the episode I Enraged Gibby, Gibby gets pissed at Freddy for allegedly making out with his girlfriend Tasha, so he challenges Freddy to a fight on Friday behind the gym at 3. Oh, 2. The extra 2 minutes are needed for Gibby to warm up those Super Saiyan muscles. Friday, behind the gym, at 3. Oh, 2. <laughs> The Statue of Gibberty. The Statue of Gibberty featured on the episode I Fix a Pop Star is Gibby dressed as the Statue of Liberty being patriotic until a group of children run in and ambush him like he's a terrorist. <laughs> I OMG reference and hashtag Super Psycho. The only form of reference I could find that connects I OMG and hashtag Super Psycho together is the following line. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. That quote is from the 1991 film Silence of the Lambs. In the episode I OMG when Spencer is in the sensory chamber and is hungry, Gibby says the following line. It wears the blindfold if it wants to be fed. While in hashtag Super Psycho, the Sam and Cat special, when Dice is trapped in the well and wants a sandwich, Nora utters the phrase. It puts the conditioner in its hair if it wants a sandwich. That's the only reference I could really see between these two episodes. I'm not sure if the iceberg creator was referring to this line in particular or something completely different. Maybe you hardcore iCarly and Sam and Cat fans can figure out something else and let me know in the comments. Gibby's head in Game Shakers. In Dan Foottoucher Schneider's show Game Shakers, you can see one of the characters holding one of the two known Gibby head replicas in the known universe. Sam's sweatshop. In the episode I Sell Penny Tees, Sam hires a bunch of fourth graders to work in early 20th century sweatshop environments or a modern day Chinese apple warehouse. The kids end up quitting because Sam feeds them animal food that strengthens hooves. Great Aunt Natalie. Great Aunt Natalie is a fake Shea member portrayed by Spencer in the episode I Want My Website Back, where Spencer goes to meet Neville Paperman dressed up in order to get him to sign a contract, giving the rights to the iCarly website back to the iCarlys. And that, my friends, was the bottom of the iceberg. Steve conspiracy theory meme. The origin of this theory is hard to pinpoint, but basically the idea around this conspiracy is that Crazy Steve from Drake and Josh murdered Drake, Josh, and their entire family in cold blood, kidnapped Megan, moved to Seattle, Washington, forced her to call her a Carly, pretended that he was her older brother, and renamed himself as Spencer. It's pretty dark, and although it's probably not the craziest thing that Crazy Steve has ever done, it's completely impossible. Carly and Spencer have a real father, and I'm assuming a mother, but we don't know where that bitch was. When. Cum fries. I have absolutely no f***ing clue on this godforsaken planet what cum fries has to do with iCarly. I've searched the internet for iCarly and french fries and fries covered in cum and now my whole search history is just nothing but X videos and hub videos of people smearing their warm mayonnaise on fries and I'm, I'm just so disappointed in myself. Good god. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. I did find something. In season 5, episode 10, I find Spencer friends. Spencer hangs out with a group of older gentlemen his age at a knockoff Johnny Rockets because he just hangs hangs with his sister and her friends all of the time. Spencer hates his new friends because they talk about politics and finance. You know, boring adult stuff. The iCarly gang is there to observe Spencer and his new friends. At this restaurant, there's this very uncomfortable, questionable waiter who talks and acts a little bit funny. Freddy orders chili fries and as soon as the guy walks away, Freddy and Sam make fun of the waiter because he talks like this. Kinda reminds me of Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys if I'm being perfectly honest. Anyway, Freddy gets busted by the waiter as he's doing the terrible impression. The guy then takes Freddy's chili fries and goes outside into the back alley and does something to the fries. He comes back in and a fellow co-worker asks where he went. He says that the iCarlys were making fun of him, so he took their fries outside and did something mysterious to them. However, the fries ended up going to the adult table with Spencer instead of the iCarly table. Spencer doesn't eat the fries, but the other three older guys do, and they end up getting sick and they run to the bathroom to defecate. The rumor is that this waiter essentially jizzed or spilled his mayo on top of the fries in that back alley, and I'm not gonna lie, I kinda believe this theory. The 
Omega in Griffin's room. This was another tricky Easter egg to find because, well, let's just say I didn't plan on searching cum fries in the Iron Cross on March 11th at 2 a.m. My internet provider or the NSA guy that watches me was probably wondering whether I was having an episode or an anxiety attack or an identity disorder or something. Was I horny or was I interested in being a Nazi? The internet provider doesn't know. Anyway, I searched Griffin's entire room for a swastika, but I couldn't find one. I did find an Iron Cross right next to his collection of Pee Wee babies, though. I'm not sure if this is exactly what I was supposed to find or if there was an actual full-blown swastika on display somewhere in the background and I just couldn't find it. The Iron Cross reads Gearhead Punk Rock, so I'm assuming that it's a logo for a fictional punk rock band known as Gearhead and not an indication that Griffin is a proud supporter of the SS. But about a minute ago, we just talked about a man jizzing in somebody's french fries, so honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised. Why does Tebow hang around kids so much? So I could not find anything regarding Tebow and children, thank God. I believe that this theory implies that Tebow hangs around kids so much because he might be a pedophile, and to be perfectly honest, I don't believe that is true in the slightest. I believe that Tebow is just a good friend of the iCarly group. I mean, hell, they've been going to the Groovy Smoothie for years. Plus, Tebow sees the crew more often once he moves in with the Benson family. This theory that Tebow is a pedophile is a major stretch. Mrs. Benson bribes Freddy with a $100,000 bar of metal. In Season 4, Episode 16, I Break Up, Mrs. Benson finds out that Freddy is dating Sam and literally has a panic attack over it. She then tries to bribe Freddy with a bar of palladium worth $100,000, but Freddy is a simp and denies the 100 k bar of metal. Bro, why do you have a bar of palladium just hanging around your apartment, and why would Freddy say no to that bar? I guess the bond between Sam and Freddy was just too strong, but Freddy is a stupid dumb idiot head because they literally broke up that same episode. You should have just went with the bar of metal, you dumbass. Spencer. In the episode I Enrage Gibby, a newspaper company wrote Spencer in the obituary, so he ended up going along with his fake death in order to essentially take advantage of stupid people who believe he's dead so that they'll buy his art pieces for more money. Veronica, a side character that appeared in I Make Sam Girlier, pops by the apartment to grieve about Spencer's death. She regrets dumping him for being crazy and too loud, and she only wishes that she could hold him one more time. Spencer eavesdropping on a conversation, being a desperate simp, jumps out of nowhere and announces that he faked his death and that she could hold him. Veronica is obviously freaked out about this, and once Spencer picked up on the fact that Veronica was freaked out by the entire scandal, Spencer then pretended that he was his fabricated twin brother, Spencer, to which she replied with, you're sick, and then left again. And that, my friends, was the ocean floor. Thank God this iceberg is over. This literally took like three weeks to make, and I feel like I'm going to die. Jesus Christ, I can't believe that we did it. I took three weeks of my time to research and develop this iceberg video, and I, I, I don't even know how well it's going to do, but I truly hope that whoever made it to the end enjoyed every single second of it. This was the most ambitious project I've ever worked on, and I'm super glad that I took a break from streams and my regular content to work on this because it was it was just super fun, and it really allowed me to experience something totally new in terms of creating content, and it was also pretty good for my mental health. Now we're gonna get back into the regular content. All music and other information will be in the description below if you want to check it out. Please leave a like and comment on this video, and please, for the love of everything that is holy, subscribe. Follow me on all of my social links, and join my zesty flaming hot Discord server. Again, links are in the description below. Have a great day everyone, and remember that I spent six hours researching cum fries.